Large infrastructure distractions have crippled productive sectors and hindered our ability to manage cynical droughts. We can debate whether these problems are causes or symptoms of insecurity. However, there is no doubt the two are intertwined. We must invest in the economic development of Somalia as any security gains made will remain fragile in the face of extreme poverty. Today, Somalia has an important opportunity and we have gathered around this table to discuss how to unlock this great potential. We have spent the past year defining the, our top national priorities under the National Development Plan, NDP, through a series of extensive countrywide consultations, and I am pleased to report that it's been fully adopted by our current administration. The NDP has set three interdependent goals for economic development. First is to build the basic infrastructure to create access to markets, rehabilitate water systems, and invest in renewable and affordable energy. The second is to enhance the productivity of agribusiness, including agriculture, fisheries, and livestock. And third is to increase access to financial services and skilled labor. Together, these priorities will enable economic growth, create employment, and promote resilience. Ladies and gentlemen, Somalia is a bright example for reform demonstrated by the willingness of our government and our people for change. There is a positive narrative outside the headlines you normally see in the media. This is a story of a country that has undergone a remarkable transformation. Industries such as money transfer agencies and telecommunication services have thrived. With 1.3 billion cent in remittance annually and approximately 80% of the population owning a mobile phone. International trade has grown with exports almost tripling in the past six years. The livestock industry is recovering and our long coastline is home to some of the richest fishing grounds in the world. Much of this is due to Somalia's vibrant and resourceful private sector. Yesterday, we met with key representatives from the Somali private sector and international development partners on a set of priority reforms and enabling actions that will accelerate Somalia's economic recovery. Together, we endorse an ambitious public-private cooperation agreement that will guide a closer public-private partnership in delivering our shared economic priorities and harness a share of domestic and international investment for growth. If Somalia's economy is strong, our government must effectively play its role in creating an enabling environment characterized by political stability, security, good governance, and effective physical and monetary policies. Ladies and gentlemen, much has been done in recent years to improve physical management and strengthen institutions. We have a credible 2017 budget, underpinned by more realistic revenue manage measures based on robust analysis. We have introduced electronic payments, scaled up the Somali financial management systems with all transactions processed live and handling of cash is minimized. Last year, we launched our public financial management action plan, laying out our top priorities and defining a clear path for reform. We have taken steps in the short term to improve administrative capabilities by modernizing tax collection and registering taxpayers while we revisit tax legislation, broaden the tax base, and invest in pro proposed systems in the medium to long term. This remains at the top of our priority and it's the only path towards sensitivity. We have started to look beyond the center towards a national physical framework leading to an agreement on unified traffic of products across all regions, as well as adopting a single system for customs management. We have progressed with a legislative framework, a clear principle for an enabling environment with legislation passed by parliament, including the foreign investment law, anti-money laundering, and the procurement bill. We remain committed to addressing issues of transparency and corruption, passing the necessary bill for establishing the Anti-Corruption Commission and implementing the Open Government Initiative. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, as we are aware, access to financing is a key enabler for economic growth. The Central Bank of Somalia, with the support from IMF, World Bank, and other international partners, has started the process of prudential regulation 
and examination of money transfer companies. And Commercial Bank has issued licenses to banks, thus strengthening the normal banking sector. Remittances remain a critical lifeline to millions in Somalia, and we must work towards securing durable relationships with correspondent banks, addressing regulatory and risk concerns in originating remittance markets, and meeting supervision, regulatory, and identity requirements within Somalia. Restoring the credibility of Somalia's currency will also be crucial to economic development. The CPS, with advice and assistance from the IMF, is establishing a roadmap for a comprehensive national currency reform, taking into account the underlying situation, security issues, and social political factors. Last year, Somalia realized a significant milestone with the commencement of the first IMF staff monitoring program, which has brought much needed focus to our institution building and elevated political support for structural reforms. We have satisfactorily completed our first SMP and we look forward to progressing an elevated new set of structural reform benchmarks. We are confident we will meet these benchmarks as we can already point to a positive track record of progress within a short period of time. Ladies and gentlemen, access to financing continues to be limited for both public and private spheres. It will be a great challenge for Somalia to meet its development goals and achieve real growth without access to concessionary resources of the type and the magnitude the institutions such as IDA, African Development Bank, and Islamic Development Bank can provide. Somalia needs debt relief to access these resources. Let me repeat, Somalia needs debt relief to access these resources. We recognize that achieving debt relief will itself be a challenge and will take time. But we need to embark on this path today, and we are committed to take the necessary steps. I can assure you, as government, we are committed to meeting all of the necessary structural reform benchmarks. We believe that achieving such a track record through solid and sound financial and economic reforms will not only lead to debt relief, but it will also be the right thing to do for our economy, for our economy and national development. At the highest level of the Somali government, there is a commitment for accountability, transparency, and respect for the rule of law. President from Macho, Prime Minister Hassan, and the Somali government as a whole, we're all profoundly committed to promise delivery and to change words into actions. We are proud to declare with an administration committed to reform at all levels of government, government and an administration which means business in moving Somalia forward. By the grace of almighty Somalia, who shall regain its rightful place, and rightful status on the world stage. Together we can deliver an about and all peace and prosperity for Somalia. Thank you very much. Your, your Excellency Minister, thank you for your very comprehensive case that has been made in terms of the structural reforms and the economic recovery that you and the government are embarking on. Could I now ask for the World Bank, please, to make their contribution? Thank you very much, Secretary of State, and um, good afternoon, colleagues, excellencies, all protocols observed. Given the time that we have, which is limited, I'll be very quick. Um, we've, we, we've already discussed the nature of the problem, and I think um, I want to look at, at, look at some of the issues going forward. Somalia will need to recover from this major crisis that it's experiencing the moment. At, at this moment and begin to build the foundations for economic recovery. And I think the Minister has set out so clearly and comprehensively, it doesn't leave much for me to say except to re reinforce a few points. I want to say on, on the economic recovery plan that uh, the Somali government has put forward, I have seen a lot of these plans, as I think many of us will have, and I've never seen one quite so focused and clear. And, and I want to really congratulate the government for the steps they've taken to identify key priorities that can make a difference in the short term to the lives of the Somali people. So if we, just to highlight a, a, a few, and if you think if, power, if, if progress could be made in just a few of these areas, it would begin in quite quick time to have an impact. Power. We heard yesterday at the forum uh, about BECO, uh, a, a local company or a consortium of local companies that have come together and we're using a combination of dealer, diesel and solar power to bring, um, to bring power to, to thousands, uh, tens of thousands of Somali 
customers at prices which are at least 50%, in some cases less than 50% lower than the extremely expensive power that, that Somalis have been producing. This, this kind of innovation is transformational. And if scale-up is possible, then, then the impact will be huge. Access to finance. New data from the World Bank shows that 90% of Somalis own a mobile phone, which is extraordinary. And over 73% are using mobile money. And this is far ahead of the sub-Saharan African average of 12% and is catching up with Kenya, uh, who is the world leader. And th this is a leapfrog. This is a genuine leapfrog that we're seeing in Somalia. But, of course, we need the regulatory framework to secure the sector against risks and attract more investment. So it's another area for action. The third one I'd highlight is water. And this has come out as part of the recovery, but is also fundamental uh, as, as in laying the foundations for Somalis, Somalia's economic future, both on the, for, on the urban areas, where we see now up to 50% of the population residing, and also for agricultural re recovery. But, but Somalia currently has some of the lowest rates of water access in the world. So there's a, a major... Uh, set of investments that are required there. Now, the, the World Bank will make sure that we are thoroughly aligning with these priorities insofar as we're able with the resources we have present. And and the impact, I think, that, that we can have will be magnified if we can collectively move as far as possible our resources behind these key priorities. Second point is on, on IFI normalization. And uh, thank you, Minister, for making the point very clearly on the, the need for Somalia to, to have debt relief. It's, it's more than just a phrase. It's, it's fundamental to Somalia's economic recovery, having access to new finance. If there isn't money available for investment, there won't be growth. There never is anywhere. So, so I think we have, to, we have to bring this debt relief issue back into being a fundamental uh, policy, a set of policy changes that, that are required um, with, with the support of creditors, and I know there's much support from creditors, to actually unlock the finance that, that Somalia needs for its economic recovery. The World Bank is only one institution, but we have significant resources under IDA 18 available for Somalia once uh, uh, that process is unlocked. Um, and, and I was also worried to hear earlier today from the UN that their data shows that development assistance is actually going down in Somalia. And that's the first I'd heard that. And I think that that also reinforces the importance of, of actually finding new channels of resources. We know that the humanitarian uh, response has been fantastic, but development also needs attention. So thirdly, um, uh, just to very quickly congratulate the government for the excellent session yesterday uh, and to thank the UK for really uh, enabling that. Um, I think what's been different about this conference on Somalia than the ones I've, I've been to before is the fantastic spirit of momentum but, but also the fact that the private sector actors were here around the table and making commitments and that brings an entirely different energy. Um, and I thought yesterday, uh, I think many people did think it was very, a very exciting event. And you could start to see, I think there was a, an understanding of this virtuous cycle that we can begin to help stimulate in Somalia of increased security and investment, improved revenue and services, more jobs for young people, which again uh, actually turns into greater security and keeps, keeps, which allows investment and allows revenue, etc. And this is where, this is the, the virtuous cycle that we're looking to create. Um, now, let me just finally say then on behalf of the World Bank Group, uh, the World Bank and IFC colleagues, uh, to all of you who've supported this conference and, um, and for uh, enabling us to play our role in Somalia. Thank you. Thank you very much. Could I now ask for Japan intervention, please? <clears throat> Thank you, Mr. Chairman, distinguished delegates, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, I'm uh, Shinsuke Takei from Japan. Somalia is right at its watershed. I would like to express my great appreciation and respect for the initiative shown by our host, Prime Minister May, 
and co-host President Phil Majo and UN Secretary General Guterres in holding this conference at this most important time. In Somalia, works for strengthening national security and economic recovery should be brought forward simultaneously. At ticket 6, uh, Tokyo International Conference on Africa Development, held last year in Africa, the theme of promoting social stability was a key point of discussion. Recognizing that capacity building of Somalia itself is essential for the stabilization of the Horn of Africa, since 2007, Japan has provided assistance totaling 442 million US dollars in the areas of strengthening security, humanitarian assistance, and infrastructure development. And Japan's self-defense force also have carried out counter-piracy operations in the Gulf of Aden and off the coast of Somalia. It is indispensable for the peace and prosperity of the whole of the international community to ensure free and open maritime order and maintaining the rule of law in the important sea lane of the Indo-Pacific, including off the coast of Somalia. Therefore, Japan will continue to make efforts to achieve a free and open Indo-Pacific Ocean. The role that AMISOM has played for the improvement of Somalia's security has been significant, and I would like to extend my deep admiration for the countries contributing to the operation. The core of nation building is human resource development. Since 2011, Japan has trained more than 150 Somali nationals who have now gone on to hold active roles in the fields of health, infrastructure development, agriculture, fisheries, and counterterrorism. In addition, Japan provides assistance for the empowerment of youth, namely vocational training for youth and employment creation. Furthermore, in March this year, Japan decided to make a contribution of 26 million US dollars in response to the famine, famine being uh, faced in the part of the Middle East in the Horn of Africa, of course, including Somalia. I would like to commend the timely commencement of the assistance by the international community under the leadership of the United Kingdom and the United Nations and hope for the earliest possible resolution of the humanitarian crisis. This conference demonstrates afresh the solidarity of Somalia and the international community. I would therefore like to conclude my remarks by renewing Japan's determination to continue its assistance working alongside Somalia. Thank you very much. Shukran. Thank you, Minister, and thanks to the government of the United Kingdom for taking this important initiative. Uh, we all agree that uh, Somalia has seen a lot of uh, development since the formation of the new government in 2012, especially on the political and security level. However, the gap between the international uh, work on the uh, from the international community and what's taking place on the ground is larger. And here we are certain that the international community will continue uh, to respond to uh, the demands of uh, Somalia and also will cover uh, the uh, appeal that has been launched by the UN for uh, working until the next year. We also ask for continuing uh, our consolidation of our efforts between ourselves and the Somali, Somali partners in order to put together a comprehensive plan to cover all what is needed under the leadership of the Somalis themselves and also with a coordinated leadership from the region. What uh, encourages us today is that this uh, conference is in conclusion to a number of very important uh, pacts uh, from which uh, this the, the one that is uh, concerning the formation of uh, security forces and the new security partnership as well as the national development plan for Somalia hence uh, the triangle of uh, security and uh, economic development is complete and this will take us to the next stage. The League of Arab Nations on its part will continue to support all these developmental plans in all its phases. The 
uh, latest uh, summit that was held in the Dead Sea uh, in last March to prepare for a high-level Arab conference in order to reconstruct uh, the, uh, the areas in uh, Somalia with the aim of uh, tying together uh, the uh, Somali nascent uh, eco economy with the economies of the area around it, and also to acquaint the Arab funds with the needs of Somalia, in order also to attract Arab capitals uh, to work in the econ economy of Somalia. With regards to the issue of debts, the Arab League knows that in order to do this, there has to be a number of conditions and steps taken. However, it will work over the next period in order to coordinate and uh, consult with the various uh, stakeholders in order to uh, speed up the recovery, economic recovery of Somalia and also to relieve the debts. In addition to what has already been said, a very a big share of what has uh, to be done has to uh, stand on the basis of what Somalia will actually do. This is through the uh, mobilization and coordination of the Arab efforts in order to help the security institutions, be it in the army or the police forces. And also the Arab League will be giving technical and legal support to uh, the Somali in order to uh, review the uh, constitution and will also contribute in the various mechanisms to follow up uh, the implementation of all those agreements, pacts and bilateral agreements which we will agree here today. Thank you very much indeed. Thank you very much. Can I call a Thank you, Madam Chair. I have four points I'd like to make, but first I too want to commend our hosts for the excellent side event yesterday on accelerating Somalia's economic recovery. This event underlined the role of the private sector in Somalia's economic recovery, and it was an opportunity for development partners to reaffirm our commitment to supporting Somalia's economic recovery. So my four points today build on that momentum. The United States welcomes the federal government of Somalia's clear and compelling articulation of its economic recovery priorities, and we look forward to finalizing a bilateral development agreement with the Somali government in the coming months. The main goal now is to advance and accelerate Somalia's economic recovery in the face of drought, potential famine, and other negative economic pressures. We applaud the increased engagement by the Somali government and the private sector through a more transparent dialogue process. And finally, the U.S. government intends to continue to align its support behind the federal government of Somalia's priorities in its national development plan through both multilateral and bilateral mechanisms within the framework of the new partnership for Somalia. We will continue to coordinate closely with other donors, the IFIs and the Somali authorities in support of Somalia's economic recovery. And on this note, because I think sometimes actions speak louder than words, I will mention that the US government has contributed $1 million to the IMF through its multi-donor trust fund and $3 million to the World Bank trust fund to support economic and financial governance. It's a hard road ahead, and I will conclude by reiterating what Under Secretary Shannon said in our last session, the United States remains a committed partner. Thank you. Thank you very much. Could I call upon Denmark, my Danish colleague, please? Thank you, Secretary Kretel, uh, Minister Duale, colleagues and friends. Now, in 2012, five years ago, we met here in Lancaster House for the first high-level conference on, on, on Somalia. And I think that was a defining moment for Somalia, followed by what I think were new instrumental decisions in Brussels, Copenhagen, and Istanbul, 
as well as several gatherings in, in, in Mogadishu. And I think, you know, important to recognize that Somalia has indeed come very far since, since 2012. But it's also clear Somalia is still emerging out of conflict. But again, we have just witnessed an electoral process which, despite its imperfections, led to peaceful transition of power without major disruptions. And I think this reflects the stride Somalia has taken since that first London conference. You have come far, even though challenges remain. Now, the current drought crisis, as colleagues have said, and the prevention of famine is, of course, an acute priority. And together with Somalia's government, its civil society, and its private sector, the donor community and the UN, Denmark also, is doing our very best to assist the Somali people with humanitarian assistance. But we aim at promoting durable solutions for long-term improvements in people's lives. Together we must save lives, but we must also make the investments necessary for the Somali people to build their own future. Because the future does not, of course, begin tomorrow, it starts today. And today is an opportunity for Somalia to embark on an ambitious and comprehensive long-term agenda for Somali-led reforms supported by the international community. Now, this morning we discussed the critical importance of peace and security, but the reality, as we all know, is of course that stability and prosperity depend on private sector-driven economic recovery, growth and jobs. Economic recovery and domestic revenue mobilization will be absolutely essential in reducing vulnerability, consolidating stability, and promoting sustainable development. In this respect, I would like to take this opportunity to commend the agreement made between Somalia's public and private sector yesterday, and I urge the government to expedite necessary regulatory reforms to improve the ease of doing business and attract investment. Denmark is pleased to announce that we, in addition to our considerable engagement on humanitarian development and stabilization efforts, will support IFC's work in Somalia with 12 million Danish kroner to advance exactly this agenda. A transparent, well-regulated and rule-based market and economic system is an absolutely prerequisite for long-term development. And we welcome the government's strong commitment to fight the pervasive corruption that undermines both political and economic processes in Somalia. Eliminating corrupt practices is essential, not just for economic recovery, but for the stability and credibility of Somalia. And finally, we must develop and strengthen our efforts to address some of the consequences of instability and state fragility in Somalia, in particular refugee flows, irregular migration, as well as piracy. To conclude, Secretary Patel, Denmark believes Somalia is in a unique position to take new decisive steps towards stability, peace and development. It will require tough efforts, compromises and political will. This conference is a testimony to the fact that the aspirations are achievable, significant progress is within reach. Somalia can count on the goodwill and support of dedicated partners and friends. Denmark is committed to continue our support for you, Somalia, as you lead us forward on the next stage of this journey in a partnership based on mutual accountability mutual commitment, and with respect for those obligations which such a partnership implies. Thank you. Minister, thank you for your very, very clear commitment. Could I now call upon the African Development Bank, please? Thank you very much, Secretary of State. Uh, accelerating Somalia's economic recovery is a key mandate for the African Development Bank. A very important part of Somalia's uh, rehabilitation uh, is particularly linked to, development, uh, to the development of its infrastructure. Improving infrastructure will undoubtedly uh, enhance the socio-economic development of the Somalian state as a whole, um, and improved structure and infrastructure will also improve uh, stabilization um, uh, across the country. For this reason, the African Development Bank is delighted that one of the main pillars in Somalia's new national development plan is focused on restoring uh, strategic infrastructure. The bank is very pleased that the core projects under this pillar are the same ones included in the endorsed pipeline of the African Development Bank, which is a part of what we call the multi-donor uh, Somali infrastructure fund. I would like to recognize the development partners that have made the initial contributions to this fund, <laughs> including the UK, the Islamic Development Bank, and Italy. Uh, 
Since the establishment in October last year of the Somali Infrastructure Fund, much progress has been made in operationalizing the delivery of projects under this particular scheme. The first two projects in the public works and water sectors worth about $20 million are proceeding on target. Work is also already underway to prepare additional uh, projects in transport, energy, and water to develop the institutional capacity of the Somalian government as a whole and to refurbish um, uh, infrastructure related to the vocational training centers uh, across Somalia. The real thrust of these projects will be to build long-term resilience in Somalia through targeted support to develop strategic infrastructure and critical institutional capacity that can enhance livelihood opportunities. The AFDB also expects to commit about U.S. $50 million of internal resources over the next three years to help deliver the infrastructure projects currently being prepared. This amount is in addition to the bank's ongoing portfolio of about $60 million, which is already working towards building resilience through infrastructure development, institution building, and improving the skills of youth. Following the momentum of broad support expressed by the international community here in London, the new partnership agreement, the federal government of Somalia and AFDB, plan to organize a meeting on the margins of the African Development Bank annual meetings to specifically discuss financing the infrastructure pillar of the new national development plan. This will be an opportunity for the government to further articulate its infrastructure investment priorities and outline the financing options uh, for delivering these priorities. Let me conclude by stressing the importance of peace to preserving the critical investments that are going to be made on the uh, infrastructure, infrastructure network uh, across Somalia, to which the African Development Bank is committed to finance. Although it may, may make t although it may take time, the African Development Bank strongly believes that inclusive development will bring peace. Uh, enhancing infrastructure will bring normality back to Somalia as a whole, and we, as an institution, remain committed to supporting Somalia to attain a much brighter future. Thank you very much. Thank you. Could I now call upon our colleagues at the IMF? Thank you, Madam Chair. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Despite the many strong and committed efforts of the Somali authorities in the past few years, and they have been committed and are work we do with them lets us judge them as the, among the most dedicated and persistent authorities with very great sense of ownership of their reform agenda. Nevertheless, they faced very daunting economic problems, including, you've heard about the ones in the long term, let me focus about the ones in the short term. The, the economy still remains sustained by donor grants, remittances, and investment by the Somali diaspora. Growth last year was low at 3% and it's expected to be a bit lower this year because of the drought, which also will pick up, uh, kick, up the food, kick up food prices. The fiscal position of the government is quite weak. Development grants are volatile and generally lower than budgeted. Tax collection is weak and compliance is low. The central bank has a, is lacking the necessary instruments despite the efforts to reconstruct itself. There has been widespread uh, counterfeiting of currency and the central bank has not issued any currency since 1990. Just to give you a sense of the proportions of that particular problem, about 95% of all currency in circulation in Somalia is counterfeit. Replacing it will cost about 50 to 60 million dollars. Last May, the IMF approved a 12-month staff monitored program to help stabilize Somalia's economy and rebuild its institutions and infrastructure. Performance under that staff monitored program has been good. And an IMF team is expected to discuss with the authorities hopefully a successful conclusion of that staff monitored program and to start discussions on a subsequent staff monitored program.
We already have noted that Somalia has difficult debt problems. I have to stress that Somalia qualifies for the highly indebted poor countries debt relief, the HIPIC initiative. That initiative has very well known and well established procedures by you in the international community and we're following along with that. Last a uh, few weeks ago in Washington, there was a round table with authorities and the donors where we discussed precisely what needs to be done in terms of reform measures for the next 12 to 18 months in, the ver in various areas, fiscal, financial uh, sector reform, monetary and external sector. Technical assistance from us and others has been clearly identified and hopefully we can all coordinate it as we go, uh, uh, go along much better. Hopefully, the authorities with our support will overcome these. They are highly dedicated. As I said, they're wonderful partners for us. And, but in the short term, especially given the, probably the humanitarian problems, we should not wait for debt relief and move forward very quickly with the provision of humanitarian assistance only related to the fund program. Thank you. Thank you very much. Could I call upon His Excellency, the Ambassador to the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia? Thank you. Thank you, Madam Secretary. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Bidayatan bism hukumat khadim al-haramin al-sharifayn. In the name of the government of uh, the custodian of the two holy mosques, I would like to thank uh, the UK for hosting the third conference to assist uh, the government of Somalia. Uh, Somalia witnesses uh, steps towards uh, political uh, settlement, uh, stability, uh, in following the aspiration of its people. The government of the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia welcome the positive developments in Somalia and its seriousness to implement the roadmap uh, uh, which resulted in the election of uh, President Muhammad Abdullah Majou, uh, President of the uh, government, federal government of Somalia. Here I would like to reinforce the stance of the Saudi Arabia with their brothers in Somalia, Somalia in all that they agree upon. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, despite uh, the uh, resources of Somal, the challenges, humanitarian, uh, economic, uh, financial, uh, has uh, to be tackled. And there are uh, famine, uh, uh, countering terrorism uh, against uh, Shabab, extremist Shabab, and against Daesh uh, throughout uh, uh, tackling. Uh, piracy, uh, refugee problem, and raising the level of uh, living standards and completing the infrastructure and rebuilding the state uh, constitution, uh, institutions. The unity of Somalia and its prosperity is the only guarantor for facing those uh, obstacles in order to uh, see them uh, gone uh, without uh, being repeated uh, towards stability and uh, security which will help in achieving peace and security in the region and in the world. The, uh, Saudi Arabia uh, provided assistance to Somalia and its people more than billion and 200 million dollars and it will continue its effort to provide everything that helps Somalia and I would like to uh, announce uh, in this meeting that the uh, Saudi Arabia will uh, give uh, $10 million in support of uh, Somalia. I would like to thank, express the thanks of my government for the United Kingdom uh, for hosting this great and important uh, conference. And I hope uh, this conference will achieve all the aspirations of the uh, states and organizations uh, throughout the world. Uh, towards achieving peace and security for the people of uh, Somalia. Shukran lihada al-ala. Somalia, could I now invite the Islamic Development Bank, please? 
Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Uh, with thanks to the government of Somalia and government of UK for hosting this event. Uh, we all know that uh, Somalia is a founding member of the Islamic Development Bank and we have had long partnerships. Uh, uh, examples include the provision of uh, scholarships, for instance, for uh, hundreds of uh, Somali nationals who are currently working uh, in different institutions in Somalia as engineers and doctors. Uh, most recently, with the help of uh, the late King Abdullah Charitable uh, Foundation of the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia, we have helped uh, uh, more than 72 communities uh, with uh, uh, clean and safe drinking water, which has been quite vital in the recent uh, drought uh, crisis. Uh, but uh, uh, we will we will continue to to strengthen our partnership with Somalia. We uh, believe that uh, while emergency assistance is quite critical, uh, it helps uh, to people to survive. But we also need to help people to live and have livelihood. Uh, we will work uh, with different institutions and we hope uh, with our United Nations partners as well that these humanitarian assistance are implemented in a way that, uh, that contributes to livelihood and, uh, and recovery and it's not uh, in isolation from the mid short term and, uh, and medium term and long term uh, development program. Uh, the Islamic Development Bank is uh, ready to work with Somalia and Somali institutions in terms of private sector development uh, that was highlighted by several speakers uh, this morning and this afternoon. Uh, we believe that uh, Somalia is not a poor country. Its natural resources and human capital uh, and vital assets that they have in these two areas, uh, if mobilized, uh, it will have Somalia to be on the right footing. Uh, we can provide the line of finance, uh, we can provide microfinance uh, grants, but more importantly, capacity development, as well as uh, the private sector that the Somali diaspora or other investors who want to invest in Somalia, the Islamic Bank Development Group can provide uh, uh, investment risk insurance, uh, uh, political risk and others, uh, which will, uh, we believe, uh, 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 give assurance, reassurance to investors and investment. Uh, uh, the private sector development not only contributes to economic growth, but also creates jobs, uh, which youth employment is a key uh, uh, challenge, uh, not uh, just in terms of uh, bringing livelihood to families, but uh, addressing the, the, the side uh, challenges of migration and uh, radicalization. Uh, we believe by providing jobs, decent jobs uh, through private sector, uh, this can be uh, contributing to all other dimensions of development. Uh, uh, we also believe that uh, uh, the Somali institutions, whether it's private sector, whether the civil society organization and NGOs, and more importantly, the government institutions, the capacity is quite critical. All the international assistance uh, we believe and we hope that, that will be implemented in a way that contributes to the capacity development of the Somali institutions. Uh, we have uh, the examples in many other countries, uh, including the country I'm coming from, uh, that uh, when the aid uh, disappears, uh, then the institutions are not there to, to pick up. Uh, so, uh, national institution development is a key priority for the Islamic Development Bank and we would like to respond to the call of uh, His Excellency, the President of Somalia, that uh, yesterday conveyed to me that to help uh, in the resilience building and capacity development. So, the Islamic Bank, Development Bank will continue its, its work uh, with the Somali institutions and in partnership with all of you. Uh, uh, you know, aid is important, but aid alone uh, does not have the scale, you know, so with the partnership with the, the other MDBs and uh, bilateral institutions, uh, we would like to contribute uh, more positively to the development of Somalia. Thank you. Thank you. Could I call upon our colleagues from the Republic of Korea? Thank you, Madam Secretary. My statement is a rather general one, which happens to be delivered in this particular session. I'd like to recall the high hope for a new Somalia in 1993 when I was a peacekeeper at UNOSOM II, the then UN peacekeeping operation in Somalia. Unfortunately, this hope was dampened by the Somali warlords vying for power, 
which resulted in the failure and withdrawal of UNOSOM II. For a quarter of a century since then, Somalia has remained in an unstable, difficult situation. But today, I see a sea change in the country. Thanks to the joint efforts by Somalia and the international community, the situation in Somalia has substantially improved. The new federal parliament with expanded women and youth representation is in place, and Somalia has drafted its milestone national development plan. It's time for the international community to come up with specific measures to accelerate progress towards Somalia's long-term recovery. To this end, the international community and Somalia need to work together to meet Somalia's most pressing political security and economic needs and aspirations as set out in the Somali National Development Plan. In this regard, Korea recognizes that important progress has been made under the new deal compact over the last three years. Now the Republic of Korea wishes to endorse the new partnership for Somalia in support of the Somali National Development Plan, which is expected to promote mutual accountability between Somalia and the international community. Through this agreement, Somalia and the international community, I hope, will work closely in a transparent and coordinated manner, strengthening national institutions to bring enduring peace and prosperity in Somalia. The Republic of Korea has been supporting Somalia in various development areas. Recently, joining the global efforts to address humanitarian challenges in Somalia, including an imminent risk of famine, Korea has decided to provide 1 million US dollars for humanitarian assistance to Somalia this year. This amount is part of our previous pledge to provide 10.5 million US dollars for famine response and prevention in four African countries, including Somalia. Finally, I'd like to briefly add that the Republic of Korea has been actively engaged in the stabilization of the country by participating in the military operations fighting piracy. Korea's naval unit has been part of the combined maritime forces and participating in the EU naval operation uh, Atlanta. The Korean government has also been contributing counter piracy funds through international maritime organization and contact group on piracy of the coast of Somalia. Thank you. Thank you very much. I am going to bring this session to a close. I want to thank everyone for a very productive discussion. There is no doubt there are challenges. We've heard from the Honourable Minister and all colleagues on issues ranging from debt relief to structural economic reforms and much of the work that we know that needs to be delivered. Um, but I think actually this will roll into the next session as well where we are now going to talk about the new partnership for Somalia in the next plenary session, which I'm going to start now because we are literally just very short of time. And I really want to just crystallise some key points. I'm not going to give too, much of them, too many remarks. But we have seen so far that Somalia has taken big strides towards peace, stability and prosperity. And we all welcome that. And we are all behind President Van Marjo's vision and agenda here. But central to this as well is agreeing the new partnership for peace, stability and prosperity. That is fundamental. And if I may, we are all, we know the challenges um, that Somalia faces. And Somalia cannot meet them on, the, on its own. So international support remains essential. And today I call on everyone to join me in endorsing the new partnership for Somalia, which has, you know, taken gone great strides, I think it's fair to say. There have been many discussions over several months, but importantly it contains inspiring and ambitious principles and a shared collective vision. And it's built around a set of partnership principles that will help deliver an ambitious set of high-level priorities, including an accountable and affordable approach to national security in line with the security pact that was endorsed this morning, a comprehensive political and constitutional settlement, including a clear agreement on roles and responsibilities and resource and revenue sharing and fully democratic elections in 2021. A major breakthrough in economic recovery and the progress and reforms that is required for debt relief, which we have just touched on, and of course improvements in respect of human rights and the rule of law and empowerment of women. Now this is 
a whole area where we all have a vested interest in delivering that success. I think all of us today will agree with that. And the success of our partnership depends upon those commitments and the delivery, but also on the outcomes for Somali people themselves. They're going to hold the government to account, there's no doubt about that, and their judgment will be when they see their lives improve. But also as partners, we have to hold each other to account as well. So over the next four years, we have an amazing opportunity, we really do, to put the instability and the issues of the past well and truly behind us and deliver a more stable, secure and prosperous future for Somalia. Um, I know we can achieve that through this new partnership agreement. And I would now welcome contributions from all okay, from our partners here today. And I'm going to go, first of all, to um, our colleagues and our partner, Your Excellency, from Qatar. Suffering from uh, 
starvation and thirst, we could not uh, save Somalia uh, uh, and our uh, efforts have increased, have been more than $200 uh, million dollars between 2010 and 2012. Through your efforts, I hope this uh, uh, conference will help in achieving and realizing the aspirations of the Somali people. I confirm the, uh, part, uh, the participation of Qatar in all the decisions taken by this conference. Australia, please. Um, well, thank you, Secretary Patel and um, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen. I want to thank the uh, Prime Minister of the UK, Theresa May, and her government for convening this meeting at such a critical juncture for Somalia. Australia, um, like the rest of you, I suppose, is deeply concerned by the deteriorating humanitarian situation in Somalia, especially in the light of the ongoing instability above all due to al-Shabaab's relentless attacks. Al-Shabaab must and will be defeated to achieve peace in Somalia. Australia has been proud to play a role in supporting efforts to provide regional stability and control piracy and gun running through our participation in the combined maritime force. Since 2010, Australia has committed around $148 million in humanitarian assistance to Somalia. I'm pleased to announce that our contribution this year um, so far is $17 million for drought relief efforts, and we have a commitment to do more, and will clearly be influenced in making that assessment by what we've heard during the course of today. So we'll continue to look at what more we can provide in the coming months. Australia wishes to congratulate the new president and his government on the early and clearly articulated priorities and we've heard uh, from him uh, this morning re-establishing security clearly remains the key but improving governance and tackling corruption will help recapture the confidence of the Somali people and future investors and build prosperity. The international community will continue to play a key role in providing support. Somalia's neighbours necessarily will play the most important role in supporting Somalia as it works towards achieving peace and stability. The Australian government pays tribute to those, by the way, who have given their lives in the fight against al-Shabaab and for the continued support by Somalia's neighbours in Amazon. While Somalia's security forces and their Amazon allies will continue to have a central role in defeating al-Shabaab and its supporters, the security response must be married to one which prioritises reconciliation and dialogue and the restoration of services in newly liberated areas. In the long term, al-Shabaab will only be defeated if all of the levers of governance are harnessed against it. That means that we as an international community need to coordinate closely and work together to ensure our efforts are complementary and have maximum impact. Australia's long term focus has been on resilience and recovery efforts and while the immediate challenge is the humanitarian response, I would urge relevant agencies to begin thinking about early recovery and development plans. Planning down now will help affected communities more quickly surmount the shock of drought. Australia shares the view that humanitarian assistance alone is not enough to resolve this crisis. By drawing on the resources and expertise of international actors now, we can, together with the new government in Somalia, address the underlying, underlying causes of, and crises and achieve a peaceful and stable future for Somalia. Thank you. Thank you very much. Could I now call upon China? Thank you. Uh, I'm very delighted to be invited to come to today's conference. The United Kingdom government, United Nations and Somalia have jointly convened 
this international conference on Somalia, China commenced these efforts. The convocation of this conference showcased the international society's interest and support for Somalia, which boasts great significance to promoting the peaceful reconstruction in Somalia. Since this year, Somalia has successfully completed its presidential election and established new government, which represented a very important step forward. But in terms of politics, the security economy, we still face a lot of challenges. To realize endurable economic development and security, Somalia needs more efforts on its own, but also needs more interest and support from the international society. The international society should continue to uphold the principle of, of Somalia-led and Somalia-owned and to uphold its efforts to stabilize Somalia. And according to the Somalia situation, we should carry out targeted plans to help and assist Somalia reconstruct its society. This conference has yielded fruitful results. Later on, we should establish follow-up and regular assessment mechanism. We hope that everyone can coordinate with each other to form a combined forces, thus promoting the profound and comprehensive development of peaceful construction in Somalia. China has consistently supported this process and provided positive help. In the future, China will continue to further improve our aid to Somalia and communicate with the federal government of Somalia to promote cooperation in security, trade, economy, education, sanitation, training, and humanitarian efforts. We will work together with the international community to make new contribution to peace and stability and development in Somalia. To help Somalia relieve the current drought crisis, China decides to provide 10 million US dollars worth of emergency food aid through World Food Program and another 5 million US dollars worth of emergency food aid to Kenya to be used to help Somalia refugees in Kenya. China will also donate 6 million US dollars worth of supplies to resettle internal displaced people to relieve the humanitarian crisis in Somalia. Thank you much for demonstrating China's very strong commitment to Somalia. Can I now call upon our colleagues from Finland? Uh, thank you very much indeed, Patel. Uh, excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, let me start by thanking the, the co-hosts, the federal government of Somalia, the, the government of the United Kingdom and the United Nations for organizing this important conference. Uh, as far as Finland is concerned, uh, fully committed to the development of Somalia. We want to see a prosperous, peaceful and democratic state of Somalia where the rule of law and human rights are respected. And we encourage the newly elected government of Somalia to work towards one person, one vote elections for 2020, 2021. Um, we would also like to underline that the, the state building is and should be a process owned by the Somali government and the Somali people. The New Deal changed the way the international community delivers support in Somalia. The, the Somalis are now drivers of their own development. And the, the international community should align its support with the priorities outlined in the National Development Plan of Somalia in the spirit of a new partnership for Somalia. Uh, Finland encourages the Somali government to adopt an inclusive and accountable state-building approach. All women and men who want to build Somalia should be welcome to contribute in this process. We should benefit the Somali people. It's important to distribute the resources and power in a fair and just manner with the regional administrations. We also encourage the government to complete the revision of the constitution in a fair and inclusive manner and to genuinely create a constitution owned by all the people of Somalia. Your Excellencies, dear colleagues, uh, we want to specifically stress the focal role of women in state building process. And in this respect, we would like to congratulate Somalia for 
advancing equality between men and women in the recently completed electoral process. This is a big step forward, we think. At the same time, it's important to remember that women and girls are often in, in a more vulnerable position than men. And we strongly encourage the government of Somalia to continue advancing equality and to continue empowering women in all spheres of development. We're, we're committed to supporting the federal government of Somalia, enhancing the well-being of women and girls. We, we recently made the decision to support Somalia's efforts in improving maternal and child health with 10 million euros through UNFPA. Uh, finally, we want to remind that the Somali diaspora and the civil society can con contribute greatly to Somalia's development. The diaspora has got an important role in providing skills and knowledge that contributes in Somalia's stable processes. The Finnish government has given our own Somali diaspora an opportunity to do so through, through our IOM media development projects in Somalia since 2008. Finnish Somali diaspora experts have strongly enhanced capacity development, particularly in the health sector throughout the country. Similarly, we continue financing a number of Finnish Somali civil society organisations that implement development projects together with their local partners in Somalia. With these words, I can confirm that Finland remains fully committed in supporting the state building process of a stable, inclusive and accountable Somalia where all people can live in peace and dignity. Thank you. Thank you very much for that contribution. Can I now call upon colleagues from Switzerland, please, Your Excellency? Thank you, Madam Chair. Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, first of all, Switzerland would like to thank the co-chairs for convening this conference and our British hosts for their hospitality. Switzerland welcomes the democratic progress made in Somalia and the outcome of the electoral process. These positive developments in the ongoing nation and state building process remain challenged, however, by the security situation. This situation hampers the establishment of a sustainable and enabling environment for economic recovery and development and exacerbates the current humanitarian crisis. We welcome the historic agreement on a national security architecture reached by the federal government of Somalia and the federal member states. Although security is an essential precondition for any noteworthy progress towards stability and prosperity, other key challenges need to be tackled as soon as possible too. Increasing sustainable livelihood opportunities is crucial to create an enabling environment for sustainable economic and social development. An open, transparent and inclusive national debate on critical constitutional issues is essential to guarantee a stable organization and functioning of the federal state. Federalism has become the cross-cutting governance issue that affects all branches of government. Inclusive politics, democratization and the adoption of legislation are of paramount importance. A unified Federal Republic of Somalia also implies a refreshed open and frank dialogue between the new federal government of Somalia and the Somaliland administration. So Switzerland is committed to continue supporting the above-mentioned processes by combining humanitarian development and peace-building instruments. We commend the Somali government for the adoption of its first national development plan. The plan outlines the aspirations of the people, Somali people for its future. In this context, we welcome the agreement on the new partnership for Somalia, which spells out the reinvigorated cooperation between all stakeholders and acknowledge the close links between political progress, the rule of law, the respect for human rights, safety, security and overall socio-economic development. Switzerland will continue to respect the priorities of the Somali government and its people and stay engaged. We reiterate our support in the field of food security, health, migration and federal governance. We see our partnership as a long-term commitment which can only succeed if it is based on mutual respect and accountability. As we speak, Somalia faces a major humanitarian crisis with large-scale displacement. 
Switzerland advocates for the complementarity of humanitarian and development instruments in the response, as well as building on existing structures and ongoing initiatives, including development programs. Any large-scale military intervention will not only seriously hamper the capacity of the humanitarian actors to effectively respond to the current situation, but will also increase the human suffering. Before concluding, ladies and gentlemen, we call upon all stakeholders to ensure that aid can and will be delivered based on the fundamental humanitarian principles of humanity, independence, neutrality and impartiality for it to reach the children, women and men in need. Thank you very much. Thank you, Your Excellency. Thank you very much. Could I now call upon the Ambassador to the European Union? Okay, thank you. Okay. Well, then I'm going to go to the Deputy Special Representative of the UN, Peter. Thank you. Thank you very much. I think I speak on behalf of all if I would welcome the endorsement of the new partnership for Somalia and congratulate the federal government of Somalia and international partners on reaching this milestone agreement. The national partnership for Somalia paves the way for a renewed and stronger partnership between Somalia and its international partners. The national partnership for Somalia is important because it builds on the progress we've made since 2012 and it allows a seamless continuity from the New Deal Compact with New Deal principles continued through agreement on a revised set of partnership principles and with the NPS providing the supporting environment for implementing the National Development Plan and the commitment of the international community towards supporting it. I'd like to highlight this partnership ensures that the government ownership and international alignment is guaranteed. Note, I would like to note that the work in the coming months will be important to make sure that the appropriate implementation oversight of the National Partnership for Somalia is put in place. Agreement on and adherence with revised aid architecture to align with the National Development Plan will be crucial and a monitoring framework for the National Partnership for Somalia will now also be required. I'd like to welcome here the plans underway for development of both and we look forward to their completion of this architecture in the very near future. I'd like to stress that the UN has been fully involved throughout the National Partnership for Somalia development stage and remains fully committed to supporting the government and international partners in making the National Partnership for Somalia a successful partnership. The Somali government will require as much assistance as possible on ensuring that it has sufficient capacity to achieve the commitments both within the National Partnership for Somalia and the National Development Plan. The UN is committed to look into development of projects and initiatives together with partners such as the World Bank to build and support overarching capacity development of the federal government of Somalia and the federal member states. Let me conclude by congratulating all of us here around the table for endorsement of the National Partnership for Somalia and note that today marks the first official day of a stronger, more effective partnership between Somalia and its international partners. Thank you very much. Peter, thank you very much. And I, as we head to close the session, I would really like to thank everyone that's contributed to this session and also for the steadfast support that has been put on display, but the determination to work in partnership with the Somalian government going forward. Now, to close this session, could I invite the Foreign Minister, please, to address and to close this session. Thank you, Your Excellency. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, today marks a significant milestone for Somalia with, an, with the agreement of a new partnership, a clear sign of our renewed mutual commitment and further strengthening the relationship between Somalia and its international partners. Somalia needs bold and, and courageous steps from its international partners. We need our partners to invest more directly in our priorities, as this will strengthen government institutions and is critical for sustainability. The current system is not sustainable, nor does it build the capacity and legitimacy of government institutions. Our government institutions are more mature with significant effort made in building a more robust system we stand committed to making further progress on public financial management reforms, increasing transparency, and tackling corruption. Ladies and gentlemen, 
All successful partnerships are based on mutual accountability. We want to make it clear that our commitments under this agreement go beyond public finances. We commit ourselves to bring together the delivery of key strands discussed earlier, including the security pact, political roadmap, and economic recovery priorities. We are committed to implementing the security sector architecture that will lead our shared comprehensive approach to the security. We recognize that adherence to the rule of law is indispensable to building a stable state, and we need to protect our citizens and resolve conflicts. We will uphold the human rights standards for all Somali citizens, including rights of women, youth, and minority groups. We commit to the sound management of resources, which will enable our ability to deliver services, attract investment, and help advance Somalia. We commit to all of this, not only because it, it's held within this partnership agreement, but because we owe it to our Somali people. First and foremost, our responsibility and accountability is towards our people. To conclude, I would like to thank all our partners for your commitment and support in helping Somalia reach this significant milestone. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much, Foreign Minister. Thank you so much for your contribution. Uh, Ladies and gentlemen, we, we come now to uh, the closing session. Well done, everybody. Uh, we, we, are, we are now in the, in the, in the, in the final session of this, uh, of this conference. And I, I, I must say, from speaking just strictly from a, a United Kingdom point of view, I do think it has been uh, a really successful and uh, fantastic to hear so many uh, good and powerful contributions. I particularly want to thank, of course, uh, President Farmaggio and uh, Secretary General uh, Guterres for the momentum they brought to our meetings today and we all hope that this third London conference will represent a new beginning for Somalia. Our shared aim is for the international community to stand with the new federal government and parliament as they strive to achieve their vision of a peaceful and prosperous Somalia. And I, I just want to sum up uh, what we've achieved today the agreements that I think will help to shape a better Somalia. There can be no progress in any field, least of all economic growth, without peace. So our new security pact represents to the people of Somalia the agreement between the federal government and the regional administrations on a federated national security model will provide the basis for strengthening Somalia's own forces and in time allow them to assume responsibility for security from the brave soldiers of Amazon. In return for these, and here they, here they come. You haven't, I'm, I'm, winding, I'm winding up now and I'm going to pass, I'm going to pass on uh, to our friends uh, uh, from, from the UN and, and to President uh, Farmaggio if he's, if he's there. Now you're, you're there, President. Uh, in return, and, and this is the symmetry that we've been talking about all day, uh, in return, the international community will provide more help. We will do better at coordinating our training of the police and military, and we will do more to counter violent extremism. Through the second element of, of, this, of these conclusions, the new partnership for Somalia, we will hold one another to account as progress is made towards a federal constitutional settlement, more respect for human rights, and one person, one vote elections in 2021. Our agreements on economic recovery will help create jobs for Somalia's enterprising people, and in time, provide the tax base that will reduce their country's dependence on outside help. And Somalia has resolved with our support to carry out vital economic reforms, including stronger management of public finances, firm action against corruption, and improved financial regulation. 
we also have a pathway for Somalia to regain access to international finance, although this will require time, political will, and the support of all donors. Most urgently of all, everyone at this conference has acknowledged the severity of the drought that is now ravaging East Africa and the acute vulnerability of Somalia. We all remember that the last time Somalia was blighted by famine in 2011, 260,000 people died. At this moment, over 6 million Somalis need emergency food supplies, and to that end, Britain has committed £110 million, which will provide aid for 1 million people. Together, we have the means to avoid a famine and stave off catastrophe if and only if we escalate our collective response. The UN has asked for $1.5 billion, and as of today, as we sit here, there is a shortfall of more than $800 million. So I would urge all our partners to respond. But that help will count for little unless aid agencies can deliver emergency food supplies to all those in need, wherever they may be, in safety and without let or hindrance. And that is absolutely vital. The words for this conference are not enough. It's only by implementing what we've agreed today, the substance of it, coming back to it again and again, that we can hope that this conference will indeed represent a new beginning for the people of Somalia. We look to you, President Farmaggio, and the new federal government to lead the way, working closely, as you have demonstrated today, with the federal member states and the international community. Thank you all for coming to London. Thank you all for the dedication, the devotion that you have shown today to building a better Somalia. And I look forward to working with you in the future, alongside you, in that noble cause. Thank you very much. And it gives me great pleasure to uh, call in conclusion on uh, our co-chair, uh, Secretary General Antonio Guterres. Oh, thank you very much. Uh, I'll be very brief. We are facing an opportunity we can't miss. The Somali people would never forgive us if you miss this opportunity. And uh, the international community as a whole uh, will all, would also not forgive us if we miss this opportunity. After more than 20 years of a dramatic conflict that caused an immense suffering to the Somali people, that had a tremendous impact in the neighbors, and that has become one of the factors of uh, global insecurity, all the conditions are, not, are now met for Somalia to be a success story. Somali as a government in which we can put our trust. Somali has a plan that makes sense. And at the same time, the African Union has been engaged in AMISOM and only requires a more effective and predictable support from the international community. And we have all agreed that we need to support the Somali government to build up their national institutions, and namely a national army and a national police force able to guarantee the security of its own people after Amison progressively will uh, withdraw as the problem uh, is being solved and the situation in the ground will allow it. At the same time, there was a very strong commitment both to address humanitarian needs of the Somali people and to address the needs for a sustainable development for the country once peace and security are progressively uh, restored. All the conditions are met for the success it is only necessary that we work hard, work together, and we put all our commitments into action to make that success the reality we all need. Thank you very much. Uh, 
Finally, uh, appropriately, I ask uh, President Farmaggio to conclude the conference. Thank you. Excellencies and distinguished ladies and gentlemen, we have come to the end of the conference, and I would like to thank all of you for your participation and commitments in this important event. I would like to reserve a special thank you for our wonderful host, the British government, and for organizing this significant conference with us. I'm honored to be a co-chair in this conference with the UK government and the United Nations. To all our partners, I wish to say today, it's a historic day for Somalia, and your presence and participation at this critical event during this critical juncture demonstrates your sustained support, dedicated and commitment in aiding Somalia to peace and stability. We remain grateful by your commitments and demonstrable sense of solidarity. The conference today has been about connecting the dots. It's been about bringing a framework for cooperation on the priorities set out in Somalia's national development plan through a renewal partnership. And as we begin on this new journey, in this new era of Somalia's recovery, the commitments made must be followed with dedicated hard work. On the Somali, there is simple no other alternative. As I mentioned this morning, I the expectations are very high, but not performing is not an option. Our aim to fulfill our vision to achieve stronger, more secure, more cooperative union that enhances equity and good governance for all Somalis and which will depend on our mutual accountability. The new partnership agreement is about the people, for the people, and with the people of Somalia. It holds us both accountable through a partnership based on mutual commitments and accountability that binds us all together. It advances our cooperation and coordination by adopting the National Development Plan as our guide on Somali recovery. I thank you. Thank you so much. That really is it, folks. Thank you very much. And uh, let's hope the next one it marks some significant progress based on the previous one and may the number of conferences on Somalia steadily diminish <laughs> as that country goes forward to a greater future. Thank you very much, everybody.